Hello, um, I am here uh, today with uh, Rachel uh, Sikorsky. Is that sort of right? Am I so oh, good? That's right, yeah. Not a last name, correct? <laughs> Sikorsky, yes. And uh, Rachel is a New York State licensed creative arts therapist, also known as LCAT, who uh, also is a, reg a nationally registered board certified art therapist. Uh, she earned her master's degree in art therapy from Nazareth College in Rochester and her bachelor's degree in psychology from Kinesis? Kinesis College. Kinesis College in Buffalo. Rachel has extensive professional training and experience utilizing therapeutic play, social focus um, therapy, and trauma informed treatment approaches in her clinical practice which centers on integrating the creative arts with EMDR, also known as eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing therapy for individuals of all ages. Over the past 10 years, Rachel has worked in residential treatment with at-risk youth, children and adolescents in outpatient and school settings, as well as families and adults in private practice. She works with a variety of client populations, including those with trauma and adjustment-related disorders, anxiety, depression, self-injurious behaviors, opposition and conduct-related issues, neurodevelopmental and autism spectrum disorders in both individual and group contexts. She currently maintains a full-time private practice in the heart of the city of Buffalo and is a founding member and webmaster of Art Therapy Buffalo, a professional group of art therapists whose mission is to advocate for increased awareness and access to professional art therapy services in the Buffalo, Niagara communities of Western New York. The members of Art Therapy Buffalo gather monthly to make art for self-care, network, and plan for community education and advocacy activities. Rachel also serves as social media marketing secretary on the board of the Western New York Art Therapy uh, Association. So you are very busy. Yes. Very busy. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for um joining me uh, today for this uh, kind of chat that I've been doing uh, with uh, various art therapists around uh, social media and just, you know, reading your bio and definitely being in full-time private practice in the area, you know, how that can be important as well as far as educating the community about art therapy, um, having clients sort of access those uh, services. So, yeah. I think this well, will thank you for having me. I'm honored to to participate, and hopefully, I can impart some bit of wisdom and and also, uh, you know, some some bumps along the way that can inform your. Yeah. <laughs> your yes. yeah. yeah. So the first question that I've been asking, like everybody that I've been talking with is um, if you remember the first time that you either used the internet um, and or social media to connect to the world of art therapy, either to find information or in your own, um, you know, maybe as a student or your own kind of professional practice, but do you remember like generally, you know, sometimes it can be hard specifically, yeah. you know? I, think, I mean, you know, when I first thought about becoming an art therapist, mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, I wonder how I can, you know, as a psychology undergraduate major, um, and I remember talking to my psychology, um, you know, advisor, like, hey, is there some way, I was also an art history major as well, is there some way I can combine the arts and psychology to, like, help people? This sounds really neat, and they were like, oh, that sounds great, but they didn't know anything about it. Um, you know, the, the art therapy, you know, graduate programs are, you know, are non-existent in, in Buffalo, New York. Um, so I went online and I'm like, is this a thing? And I found out it's a thing. Um, and actually at Buffalo State College, it's our local state college here, it's a SUNY school. They have an art therapy minor program. Um, it used to be a graduate program back in the 80s. Um, I think early 90s, maybe they, they closed it. 
uh, so I took I took a little time off between my undergraduate and graduate study. I took the intro to art therapy course there. I took a couple studio courses um, because I learned online that uh, I needed to have more studio art um, you know credits versus just the psychology to get into a graduate school program. And so I think really the internet helped me figure out that this was an actual career. Uh, that, you know, I could take an intro class that would help me decide if this is what I wanted to do. And that's what ended up happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was around 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I, you know, I, I moved towards my graduate study um, and I finished that in 2007. And it's right around the time where our Therapy Alliance was born. Um, and so I think I, I did seek out a lot more information and, and support um, online, you know, since graduating and, and as this uh, Art Therapy Buffalo community was born too, you know, and trying to figure out what other people are doing in terms of advocacy and, and educating the public and, and getting together uh, and networking and that kind of thing, building a community. Mm -hmm. It's a long answer. <laughs> yeah, no, I like the the um, sort of the timeline that unfolded for you, you know, using the internet for information seeking about art therapy, you know, as an undergrad and, and being able to kind of research, you know, what resources uh, were out there and learning about the educational requirements, which I think happens today. I mean, there's so much information sort of out there like now. Um, and um, how as you became um, a graduate student and kind of finished with graduating, how social media was really sort of, you know, kind of exploding as far yeah. as as um, mainstream kind of use, you know, social media was out there like before, but I think it really started to, to take, you know, that it wasn't going away, you know, it just wasn't like this fad that people were, you know, wasting their time on and, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. you know, said so that it could be used, you know, and, um, and even, you know, since that, which really, you know, that was like 10 years ago, um, how it's almost like a necessity, you know, yeah. for so many things, you know, um, and um, how, you know, from that, you know, like Art Therapy Buffalo, like, you know, being a graduate of a master's program in Art Therapist and, and how the resource of Art Therapy Buffalo was sort of inspired. Yeah. And I think, too, in our area, you know, Rochester and Buffalo are about an hour or so apart, you know, so those of us who are living and working in Buffalo, you know, I commuted there and worked here, interned here and found a job here, um, you know, without the support of a graduate program locally, you kind of feel like you're on an island, you know, and there, there aren't a lot of, um, there isn't a lot of support or opportunities, you know, even just continuing education. So I think those of us, you know, in in the west, you know, the farther western New York community, just kind of felt disconnected. Um, and interestingly enough, right around the time that you know a few of us got together to say, hey, let's let's do some meetups and let's, you know, make some time to keep our therapy in our lives, you know, personally and professionally. Um, right around that time, I think that those folks in Rochester who who did a lot of the legwork to create the Western New York Art Therapy Association chapter, because the other two New York chapters are downstate near near New York City. So even there, we were all in this area kind of feeling disconnected. Um, so yeah, the social media piece, I can remember my, my graduate school uh, colleagues were saying, you have to join Facebook. It was like 2007, I was like, I don't need Facebook. I did, and now, as you said, it is a necessity without the internet, without social media, without that, we would be even further disconnected from what is happening, um, you know, not even just in our state, but in our country and, and internationally in terms of our therapy. So um, it is, it really is important. And, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you, I think you started to touch on um, the, how the formation of Art Therapy Buffalo kind of started, but could you sort of walk us through um, how, you know, when that formed and um, how and sort of those goals, like more specifically for people, especially if they're not as familiar. I know I follow, you know, Art Therapy Buffalo on its various different social media sort of platforms, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, 
uh, a couple of colleagues and I, um, you know, who, who keep in touch, um, one of them had, you know, went to George Washington University um, for her graduate study. And when she moved back to Buffalo, which is where she's from, and she wanted to live and work, uh, her family's here. Um, I began supervising her for her ATR, um, you know, hours as well as for her LCAT hours um, because I was able to contract with the very small four hours a week part-time job she was able to find. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another story mm -hmm. about our therapists mm -hmm. spreading themselves all over to do yeah. the work we do. Um, but, you know, we, we really felt this need to, to connect and who else is out there working in Buffalo that we don't know who, who you know, we shouldn't all be disconnected from one another. If we can band together, this will be good for our field. This will be good for each of us as, as individuals and, and um, who knows what we can do. So it really started off as a way for us to make time for art um, and, and just talking about what we do and, and the trials and tribulations of trying to, you know, carve out uh, an art therapy position, you know, at our various, you know, places of work. You know, because a lot of people, you know, they're not posting for art therapy jobs. Mm -hmm. They're posting for all kinds of other things that we're trying to, you know, um, make a claim for why doing it our way is better. Uh, and it is. Uh, so, so I think it was uh, January 2014. Um, we sent out an email to those that we knew, um, you know, living and working here or some students and said, hey, we want to get together and have a meetup. Come join us. We'll have snacks. Uh, we'll have wine, we'll have our materials. Let's, let's see what happens. And from that, like this whole Art Therapy Buffalo thing was born, we ended up, which is really remarkable, because, you know, you get together with people and people are busy, and then it just like fizzles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for three years now, yeah, um, great. You know, February of 2014 was our first meeting. We have been meeting monthly, every month, mm -hmm. um, to get together and talk. So even if there's just three of us, maybe there's 12 to 15 um you know our group has sort of expanded and contracted uh you know but it's been consistent so we decided probably uh after about a year of just getting together mm -hmm. um what can we do what can we do in the community to like help people know who we are and what we do and and dispel some of the myths or misconceptions about our profession um, so we put together a um, client art show um, that took place uh, last year, uh, June 2016, at a, a place uh, called the Buffalo Art Studio. Um, and so that event sort of really was the catalyst to us coming up with our logo, to doing a lot more social media stuff, promoting the show. Um, we did some community, uh, you know, community art events. We have a, a really cool. Uh, place called Larkin Square here in Buffalo where they have a lot of like outdoor music, they have food trucks, they have Food Truck Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Food Truck Tuesday was a great opportunity for us to like get a lot of people, sort of bring awareness to our group, have them make some art, and we put that art on display at, um, at the Buffalo Art Studio show, the exhibition, so the community members that took part could see their work, and they could also really connect to client artwork uh, and the artist statements that our clients wrote about art therapy. And a lot of our friends and family members are like, now I get it. Now I get what you guys do in reading these client statements. You know, this is how, this is what this piece means. This is what art therapy has helped me with. People were really able to connect in a way we, we really weren't able to do. We all have our, our standard, here's what art therapy is, answer. After yeah, we, the word, you know, right. the words versus seeing it, you know, or experiencing that. So from there, I think our, our social media presence really took off because we wanted to promote the show. We wanted to bring people in to see this work and to, to relate to it. And then from there, we've been really just trying to figure out, okay, who are we as an organization? Do we become a, you know, a, an LLC or a non-for-profit or what do we do with this? Um, and we're still kind of at that stage, but at the very least, we get together monthly to network, to make art. Um, and to kind of talk about what we should do next. Um, and so with that, uh, June 2nd, um, next month, we have a, an art therapist art show. Um, my private practice is located in an area of Buffalo called Allentown. Uh, it's a very L LGBTQ friendly uh, neighborhood, very artistic, 
Um, so there's a small gallery space, and we thought, okay, us art therapists can put our heads together. We've got a month. Let's all make art and put it on display um, and see if that can be the catalyst to not only um, do more kind of educational stuff, but um, a little more social media stuff and a little bit more work towards whatever it is we're going to become next, <laughs> if that makes sense. So um, we're, we're doing a show uh, called Hope and Fear, and it's really our therapist responses to the current social, political, economic climate in our nation. Um, a lot of us have been struggling, I think, um, you know, how do we help our clients process the, the, the fear or the hopelessness about certain policies that are being discussed or certain changes that are being made mm -hmm. and empower them and help them connect more to hope? How do we do that for ourselves? Mm -hmm. How do we not let our thoughts and, and beliefs impact our ability to help the people that we serve? And how can we create a broader dialogue as a community about this and how our therapy and art making can actually really help um, us connect to different points of view um, and that shared sense of, of fear and, and hope and all that good stuff. So yeah. that's kind of where we're at. Wow. Yeah. Just like what, hearing you um, talk and describe also that sort of journey, you know, related to Art Therapy Buffalo and, and just in the three years, you know, like how it's really kind of formed um, even more um, in the the importance of that connection and community um, not only for ourselves as our therapists which we can you know feel isolated especially if um, we're in an area that um, is not um, as maybe saturated with like art therapy you know where graduate programs are there's usually like a lot of art therapists and sure, yeah yeah if you head back home or um, to uh, another um, state or you don't know people kind of finding that can be hard you know and I think um, definitely social media has helped with um, connecting that more and then also uh, another level that you speak about is educating kind of the, the public and community and um, making um, the awareness sort of known about the profession and the work that we do um, and important sort of issues that, you know, um, our clients are facing, you know, the communities are facing, like the world sort of yeah. facing um, and being able to uh, spread sort of that disability and awareness um, that very important work yeah. mm -hmm. and I would say that's really what our social media I guess uh, marketing plan <laughs> this is not planned but you know it's really educational and informative so the things that we share and inform the public about is really like hey did you know you know, hey, this is what's going on in the news. Hey, this is this is the conflict within the art therapy community who support the uh, uh, visibility that you know Second Lady Pence is bringing to our field, and also the part you know of our community that's not so sure about that. And again, it's about you know getting people to think and connect to this stuff, as well as you know if we if people can walk away saying, oh, I didn't know that. Oh. You know, now I get it. Now I get what you do. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, uh, is good for all of us. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, and, and being in, whether you're in a higher saturated area or not, I, I, I really do believe that the more we band together as a community, the more we bring each other up. Mm -hmm. You know, this, it is not competitive. You know, I, I, I share my private practice space with another art therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, all of us, you know, doing the work that we do and, and we sort of share this Art Therapy Buffalo community, um, you know, our website is really about informing the public and helping them get access. You know, we get a lot of inquiries about like, hey, I might want to go to graduate school. Can you give me some advice? Or, hey, I'm interested in this for myself or for my child. Who should I go to? And that's really what our, our website and our, what our group is about is helping people get access. It's not about promoting one of us over the other or, or, or competition. It's, it's really about bringing each other up and creating hopefully more job opportunities mm -hmm. that will make the service accessible to the public. Mm -hmm. People on Medicaid, people who need to use insurance. Mm -hmm. um, 
people, you know, who, you know, grant funded programs that can, can make group art therapy accessible to mm -hmm. you know, communities that need it. You know, those are the, that's the direction that I hope, um, you know, this can go and that we can be a part of really trying to shape or pave the way to, towards. Yeah, so, so important um, for the field and sustainability of um, our work and then also um, just for the pro profession as, as well. I really feel that our individual um, sort of actions or, um, I don't know what the word, um, Oh, like what we sort of do as individuals really kind of trickles down to the community as a whole, you know, yeah. like where we all benefit or um, we all sort of are impacted by, by that. So um, yeah, when I, when I hear you talk about that it kind of reminds me of, of how um, that it's not just the individual person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that in mind more recently too. We're we as a local group are, are trying to do more uh, in conjunction with the Western New York Art mm -hmm. Therapy Association chapter, and that's kind of how I, not not that I have all this extra time, but like that's kind of was really important for me, you know, to say like we should be working together with that group and our group to really build build this up on a greater level. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's also something we're kind of working on, like how can we do some um, connected activities, uh, events that really, again, expands, um, you know, the, the scope of who we reach and how we reach them. Great. I think um, we probably already maybe discussed uh, a little bit sort of of this, um, but then talking about, I mean, not just like Art Therapy Buffalo, but also the Western uh, New York Art Therapy Association, um, as far as social media being beneficial for um, maybe specific, maybe regional um, or local kind of um, art therapy communities. Um, you know, I know we touched on, you know, this, the sense of isolation that can happen or um, like the job kind of market or questions. Um, but uh, what would you say uh, are some of the benefits and maybe some of the challenges that um, could be experienced? Yeah. Um, I think I think the big I'll start with challenges. Um, you know, not not just me, but you know the people that I work with, you know, locally in our group, and as well as on the Western New York chapter board. Um, it's time. <laughs> yeah. we're, all, we're all working. We're all, we all have families. We all have, you know, we have all of this stuff and then we're trying to create space for that too. So I, I feel like the challenge is how do we, how do we carve out time? How do we delegate? How do we get more people involved that, you know, we can all put our heads together and create enough time together, you know, among each of us to really do that work, to do, um, to be able to respond to emails, to be able to, to do social media um, posts, um, to be able to host events, organize and host mm -hmm. events. That's something I'm really learning uh, a lot about, you know, with, with both groups. Um, it's a lot of work to plan and execute and promote. Um, so I think um, finding systems that help us use our time effectively um, is really important um, because not all of us have time to sit down and and find the best articles and post those or schedule them to be posted although scheduling is a help yes, it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know trying to create or find systems that are that already exist that allow that to at least happen semi-regularly I think is important because people People don't want to feel alone. People want to, Western New York chapter members want to feel like there's a benefit to membership. And that means that there is stuff mm -hmm. happening on social media that keeps them engaged. Mm -hmm. hey, this is happening or, or I, I learned this or I like to see. We've gotten feedback since, you know, the, I think, you know, for them, social media kind of died for a little while because they just didn't have someone to take that over. Mm -hmm. um, and although I wish I could be doing that more, um, the little bit that we have been able to do more of, people have noticed and really um, been, been 
and excited about. Um, I think so that I mean the challenge is really how do you how do you keep it going? How do you make sure you keep it going to, to keep people engaged? And um, how do you make time for some some activities to bring people together? Um, and I think right now in New York State, uh, in particular, you know the licensure um, uh, rules have changed that that we're required now to get so many units of continuing education, which is great. As, as registered art therapists for our ATR, ATRBC, we were already required to do that every five years, but now it's every three for LCATs. And the tricky part is um, the places where you go for continuing education um, may or may not count towards that. So we as a local group, the Western New York chapter, and I think just as a larger association, we're trying to figure out how to help people get access to that. Mm -hmm. So that I think is a blessing and a curse because it will help us make sure that happens, mm -hmm. um, but it is a challenge, I think, you know, because we can't just put on a workshop anymore. Mm -hmm. We have to put on a workshop that counts for people's continuing education um, because that's what they need and that's what they want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of, of benefits, I don't want to lose your, you know, your, your initial question. So challenges, but, but benefits to doing that, is that right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Again, I think it's, you know, keeping people connected. Um, it's really important that um, those of us living and working in these areas don't feel alone. Um, I, I do know some people who have, you know, gone through the master's program or, or you know, couldn't find a job, who took on other position, and they're not art therapists anymore. And that makes me really sad <laughs> because, um, you know, even I have, I have, I do some, some ATR, ATR BC supervision privately for folks um, who, can, who don't have access to that in their workplace. And even those folks who aren't able to do art therapy, quote unquote, um, at their places of work, I really try to emphasize you're an art therapist. Mm -hmm. This is your training. You know how to think creatively, no matter what position you find yourself in you're viewing it through that lens and don't forget that this is who you are. Um, so I, I, I think though people do need that pep talk. They do need the, the, the social media like, hey, did you know? Or hey, this is going on. Or hey, we're getting together. I think that connectedness is so essential for helping people continue to do the work that they do and to do it effectively. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Question. Yeah, that sense of belonging, and you're not sort of alone. I mean, not just being an art therapist, but the struggles or challenges or, you know, triumphs, you know, successes that we have, yeah. being able to kind of share those like with one another. Yeah, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And I think that can happen too. Um, I, I try to get even, you know, folks in our local group. Like, why aren't you an ADA member? Why aren't you a national association member? Mm -hmm. This is important. These are the people helping us advocate, mm -hmm. you know, nationally, internationally, and then this, the, you know, the state level. But, you know, people, I think people, uh, and it costs money. It costs money. It's one more thing. And they can't feel necessarily the benefit of that larger membership. And you have to be a, a, a member of a larger association to be a local chapter mm -hmm. member. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself trying to figure out how do I help at least, you know, in our region, mm -hmm. the, our therapists living and working here feel more connected to what's happening on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. It, it, you know, the, there's, you know, obviously the professionalism involved, like you should get your ATR, you should get your ATRBC, you should be a chapter member, you should be a larger association member. Mm -hmm. It's a part of, you know, again, building community, bringing us all up, um, you know, validating what we do. Um, but it could be hard when there is this at least felt sense that eh, it's not really worth mm -hmm. it. Um, and that can happen you know, in terms of money and in terms of time and people mm -hmm. really um, carving out that time to, to come to our meetups or, mm -hmm. or to go to local events or to go to the, the national conference. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's really important um, that that's a challenge and a benefit, I think, to, to us in particular as art therapists is how do, we, how do we help people really connect to why that's so important? Because mm -hmm. um, it is. Yeah. yeah. 
So if people are interested in connecting to Art Therapy Buffalo, whether they, you know, are in sort of that area or um, want to uh, kind of follow what's happening with the group, um, I think it's a great sort of model, you know, for other sort of groups and um, um, art therapists to really... um, look into and I think you've done a great job kind of explaining sort of that as well um so where uh where I guess can uh, our therapy buffalo be found on well we're on we're on Facebook and we're on Twitter uh, I will admit Facebook's more um productive <laughs> um but I think you know uh what we hope to do is to maybe uh, I mean we should be on Instagram it's visual it's about imagery um i think that's what we would like to do so you you know your listeners can take you know try to find us that way too um but our therapy buffalo.com is is our website um you know it's it's a great model i think for um you know other communities that want you know they want just kind of a resource to direct people to I know I don't have time to field all the phone calls and emails personally from people who are kind of interested. So I'll just refer them to the site. Hey, check out some of the therapists that are in our network. Um, Take a peek at their profiles. See if someone is right for you. Contact them directly. Um, So certainly our website, people can contact us that way. We're pretty good at getting back to people who have questions. And there's a big network of us, you know, to talk to. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll open up our, our meetups, our monthly meetups to students who are interested and have just general questions. Mm-hmm. We've had a, a handful of times where a few students have come in, they'll say, hey, what is our therapy? What do you like about being an art therapist? And then they can get the answer yeah, from all It's great, like right there, you know, directly, and, yeah. I mean, and even what we're doing here, we're using Zoom to talk to each other. Uh, that could certainly be something that we we integrate uh, into our meetings. That way we can all feel the same question. And then there's a nice, great variety of responses from people with, you know, all kinds of different experiences in the field. So Facebook is definitely, um, Facebook and Twitter, future hopefully is Instagram. Um, and, you know, more, I think more content on our website is, definitely something we have been meaning to do and we have not done you know blogs take time and yes. yeah that content that's one of the <laughs> previous kind of yeah. t- too, you know yeah. about yeah. how our therapists make time for that or uh, their strategies that they may use for that or to listening about that because <laughs> it's definitely something that you know, me and in my group, we've all been like, okay, if we all put together a blog article, mm-hmm. we can we can have the content and then we can disseminate that from time to time. And at least mm-hmm. we're getting, we're, we're giving our, our um, you know, people who, who follow us something mm-hmm. uh, in terms of content and updates. Uh, so I think that's definitely a goal. You know, by the end of the year, uh, it would be really great to have the blog, you know, up and running at least, you know, mm-hmm. quarterly. Um, a newsletter quarterly would be lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something too that we're we're trying to put our heads together with the Western New York chapter. You know, a, a, you know, a newsletter would be great. At least again, we're just saying, hey, hey, we're doing stuff, guys. Mm-hmm. Hey, there are things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Don't feel alone. Reach yeah. out to us. Connect. Um, so yeah, 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 and hopefully you know, connecting to those people, like more people will get involved and be able to contribute to that sort of initiative as well, you know, absolutely um, content or, you know, ideas uh, with that, you know, collaborate through that. So, yes. you know, so, so many ideas, so little time. I know. <laughs> right. so, yeah. Right. It's always kind of is good. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And I know that we are thinking about maybe planning sort of a group sort of um, uh, chat or sort of, inter- you know, with sort yeah. of one of the monthly meetups. So I that would be, that, yeah. yeah, that would be great because then we'd be able to kind of see that sort of a little bit in action. So yeah, that'll be a future 
Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of, uh, you know, all of us involved here um, would, would welcome that opportunity to just talk more about mm -hmm. what we do. And you can hear from, from, from other females. Yeah. Like other voices kind of added to that conversation. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't know how similar or different, you know, the evolution of our therapy Buffalo will be, you know, communicated by them, but I, I would welcome the opportunity. Yeah. To yes. Too. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to to chat and also all the great information that you um, have talked about. I think it's very inspiring uh, for other art therapists and uh, mental health professionals to kind of, I don't know, consider um, and, you know, try to implement or yeah. go back and re sort of charge yeah yeah i appreciate again your time too and and what you're doing and what you have been doing um it's really it's it's inspirational and and such a great support to those of us again you know trying to stay connected to what's happening and um it's great that you have been able to put all that together it, you know your work and and the um art therapy alliance community it's been well, thank you yes yeah. So keep up the good work and um, yes, hopefully there'll be like a part two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I look forward that, to, yeah, to getting that book. That. Yeah, so thank you. All right, thanks, Gretchen. Thank